Nitric acid is HNO3. It is a very strong acid, so-called oxidizing acid. It is made by the reaction of nitrogen oxides with water and it will dissolve all sorts of metals, as you'll see. Normally, it comes dissolved in different strengths in water, so-called dilute nitric acid, concentrated nitric acid, and then really strong, which is called fuming nitric acid, which we don't usually have in the lab. I was inspired by this book called Ignition, which I heard about from um, a YouTube comment, it's a really good book, um, which talks about rocket fuels and mentioned that aniline, the organic compound, when mixed with red fuming nitric acid, which is very concentrated nitric acid, spontaneously burst into flames, so-called hypergolic reaction. So Neil didn't have any red fuming nitric acid, but he had some pretty strong concentrated nitric acid. So he tried the reaction in a test tube. And to begin with, there were some popping noises, but then as the aniline warmed up a bit, it really did burst into flames. Rather, smoky flame came out at the top of the test tube. So it really looked like a rocket, not a very big rocket, but it's always satisfying when something you read in a book actually happens. Ooh. Neil's all-time favourite experiment is the reaction between copper and nitric acid. Neil likes this reaction because you get a different result with concentrated acid and with dilute acid. So for the demonstration, he ran the two reactions side by side with concentrated next to dilute. And if you watch, you'll see the concentrated reaction goes very quickly. Clouds of brown gas, which is the oxide NO2, nitrogen dioxide, and the solution goes a deep greenish colour. Violent bubbling. On the other hand, the dilute reaction goes a lot slower. The dilute reaction was in fact so slow that Brady wasn't convinced anything was happening. But then it did start to get going and the solution started going a rather pale blue with some bubbling. And Neil decided to jazz it up by adding a bit more acid so it went rather more concentrated. And then the reaction went much better. The solution went a much darker blue and there were a few traces of brown gas that is NO2, but the dilute reaction produces NO rather than NO2. The reason that Neil likes this reaction so much is that it was done at school by his school teacher and he was the only boy in the class 
who wrote down the equations for the two reactions correctly. We'll give you the equations as well so you can see them. Now the third demonstration is based on the English two pence coin, which most people call the 2p coin, which used to be made out of copper. And now because copper has become much more expensive, is made out of iron with a coating of copper. So I had the idea that we should try reacting a two pence piece with concentrated nitric acid. You know we enjoy destroying coins, or at least reacting them chemically. But the reason here is that copper dissolves in concentrated nitric acid. You've just seen it dissolving. But iron is passivated. That is, it reacts a small amount, and then the surface gets a coating and the reaction stops. Neil tried the experiment before Brady arrived in Nottingham, and it worked perfectly. Copper dissolved, and he was left with an iron coin that looked more or less the same as the copper one. You could see all the writing and everything else. Then, when Brady arrived, Neil tried it again. There was a much more violent reaction. So Neil took the coin out. It was really thin. The picture of Her Majesty the Queen was just a vague shadow of her normal self. Almost gone. So. Neil decided to do it again, and he repeated the experiment. The reaction happened. And this time, the coin came out just as we expected. Copper was gone, but the iron and the picture of the Queen was there. So there was an extra twist to the second experiment because Brady was a bit slow with his equipment. Should we go and put it next to the other two control ones? No, no, just need to yeah, wash it off. And let me stop these. Neil took the coin out. and waited before rinsing it. And while he waited, some of the solution of copper nitrate reacted with the iron and put some clean copper coating back onto the surface of the coin. So there was the Iron Queen with a copper blotch next to her, which chemically is quite fun. But the thing which fascinated me, and of course Brady and Neil, was why on earth the first experiment had failed? Why did the Queen dissolve? And watching the video, I noticed that the volume of nitric acid in the first experiment was much smaller than in the second experiment and I decided that perhaps the solution had got hot and the passivation reaction only happens with cold nitric acid. If you have very hot nitric acid, it can dissolve away the coating and keep reacting with the iron. So what we decided to do was, this was long after Brady had left Nottingham, I persuaded Neil to do a control experiment where he did two reactions side by side, 
with exactly the same amount of concentrated nitric acid, but one starting at 50 degrees centigrade and the other at room temperature. And when he dropped in the coins simultaneously, there was a modest reaction from the cold nitric acid, but the hot nitric acid really bubbled away very vigorously and the temperature nearly doubled, went from 50 degrees to nearly 100 degrees. I think it was 96. So when he took the coins out, the one from the cold acid looked really nice. You could see all of the engravings. But on the other coin, it was largely dissolved away and a thin wafer. So it turned out I was right. And I can't claim to be have thought of it all myself because I did look in a book about the reactions of iron and nitric acid and it mentioned cold nitric acid. But I worked out why there might have been a temperature difference. But I think this is really quite a good example of how science is done. You come up with a hypothesis, an idea of what might happen, and then you try an experiment with a prediction. The hot one should react more than the cold one, and you test it to see if it works. And if it hadn't worked, we would have had to come up with another explanation. Professor, is nitric acid dangerous? Yes. And it's very corrosive. It tends to react with skin to make it yellow. When I was at school, when safety regulations were not as strong as they are nowadays, I did a lot of experiments with concentrated nitric acid and my fingers were almost permanently stained yellow from the nitric acid. And the skin goes yellow and after a bit it peels off. But it's not a dangerous injury, but nevertheless, I get quite worried if our students had yellow fingers. Did your parents ever say anything to you like, Martin, why are your fingers always yellow? No, they didn't. And even more important, they didn't think I'd been smoking, which they might have done. I think they just thought he's a chemist and this was par for the course. 